<laughs> Here, man, would you like some coffee? Hey, so where are we going today? I think we're going to Norfolk. And who we got? Well, I don't know. It depends if he comes out. I'm a little nervous he's not even going to show up. But he's literally going to be out of it. Now you take hey, that. Hey, thanks for the coffee, Craig. Yeah, I do. Well, it's one thing you never want your pilot to actually shake before you get up in the air. But No, it's Aaron Davis. Aaron, Aaron Davis. Davis, man. Aaron Davis, speaker, world-renowned speaker, traveler. Actually, traveler aficionado. If you want to talk about someone who's flown in planes more than that dude, I, I really don't know another. I mean, every three days he's up in a plane somewhere. Yeah, he's always somewhere. The best part about this? He, he flies every day, but he's scared shitless. Scared to death. Scared to death. So he says the difference is so he can see the pilot. <laughs> well, I don't know what that says about you. He's, no <laughs> shit. All right, there he is. <clears throat> Will you get right? Did you take your last prep? Hey, how excited are you? You know, if I was any more excited, man, I'd be purple. <laughs> is that possible? For a brother to turn purple, we gotta be really excited. <laughs> or extremely scared. Or, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure what's up, but it's gonna be some coloration going on up in this piece. Uh, <laughs> let's go fly him. All right. Let's do it. You are. You Dude, are this is. I love airports, though, man. Yeah. Like this. My Look dad used to. Coming. My dad used to clean this place. Really? Dunk it all the, all the way down. I knew this. Uh, this this place wasn't the way it looks now. It's a little different. But I think that's where my attraction for airplanes came from because. As much as I'm on them, it never ceased to amaze me, man, of how something can take off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here I am always talking about facing your fears, interrogate your fears, investigate your fears. And folks, I'm on airplanes on a regular basis, all right? Uh, usually, actually, about a week I'm on an airplane. But you know what? I've got some fears, just like you have some fears out there. But usually, I'm on the bigger planes. But this morning, as a guest on Old Green Plane, oldgreenplane.com, this is the plane I'm going to be on today. But you know what, folks? You can't enjoy the views unless you enjoy and experience and interrogate your fears. That was 60 seconds with Aaron. Your attitude, your choice. How long was that? 108. Oh, really? Cool. Go Big Red. In Nebraska, we say, go Big Red. I'm going to say right now, all the green flame. Wind calm, visibility 2, mist, ceiling 200 overcast. Temperature 102.9 around, altimeter 6002. ILS runway 36 approaching east landing and departing runway 36 and 32. Understanding runway 2. Our destination today is Norfolk, Nebraska, located about 90 miles northeast of Lincoln, Nebraska. This town of about 12,000 people really has a treat in Barnstormers Restaurant. And for Barnstormers fans, if you've been there, you know the favorites, like the Zulu Smokehouse Stack, or the Kitty Hawk, or the Tailhook Meatball Grinder, or the Charlie Foxtrot Patty Melt. There's really nothing but great things on this menu. And if you've never been there, you're missing out. It's one part regional airport and one part old car saloon. It's a neat and interesting place. And our guest today, Aaron Davis, has never been there. Because Colin and I, well, we've been here a few too many times. My scariest no, yeah. part, man, was actually no part of the flight. It was, the, you know, it was just the anticipation. Yeah. That was a scary. When I got up in the air, I was, I was good to go. What about like the taxi into the runway and stuff? Or, or you All of that. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Once yeah. we got in the air, it was almost like I was just another airplane. Right. But, but one thing I always do is always say a prayer. I mean, everybody's point is different, but for me, I just ask God to give us protection. Mm -hmm. You know, the flight to give you the wisdom, the insight, and everybody else you come in contact with. And then I'm, I just don't think about it. But once we took off, it was almost like I was just taking off out of yeah. the airport, like always. But leading up to that, the heart rate was. was pumped. I don't yeah. know that I'd be yeah. praying for God to give you the wisdom. No, I said you. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say. I, I don't know how smart you need to be to. Because you know what the last, what they say, the last thing to go through your mind in a plane crash is. Are we supposed to talk about this right now? 
But do you know what they say? No. I don't Honestly, know. it's, it's it? your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say goes through your mind. <laughs> That's what they say. Yeah. I don't know. No. Well. Oh. Well, I, I was asking God for protection. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and I think about it, once you get up in the air, it just became... I would say regular that doing all the time. What, what was irregular for me was the views. Yeah. You know, like you Craig, you asked a good point about that. So I've seen a lot of things, but that was the biggest fear for me, man. Just the anticipation of once we got up there, I was cool. What's your What's your schedule like with speaking? Like, is it? I mean, you know, as someone who gets their their income, you are a professional speaker. I mean, a lot of people. Like, don't you think this day and age has a lot of people who want to be speakers? I mean, me, I come to you a lot. You're kind of a mentor of sorts that get part of the speaking off. But I realize real quick when I try to get it, there's people who want to try, and there's people like you who do. There, that's a gap, don't you think? I mean, are you seeing that, where there's a difference in people who are trying to get out there and speak? Because your grind, your schedule, my, my friend, oh, man, you you're are, un- <clears throat> I mean, I don't think people understand that's the level of dedication it takes to make mm-hmm. a, a life, you know, and a career. Put food on the table for your family. Yeah. You know, it's you always see a, um, a number of people who want to get involved in it at different times, and, and some are you know occasional speakers. Some um, uh, are committed to it. They read all. Oh, oh, there we go, Maddie. Maddie. Fall joints for you guys. Oh, uh, thank They're you. Flat. I thought they were fall. Cool it's it's weird to eat the testicles of another living thing. Mm-hmm. Isn't that weird? You think you think cows wonder what ours tastes like? Man, I'm not sure what you eat, man. I'm eating uh, pickle chips, man. That's what I'm keeping in my head. Well, you're right now eating fast. Mm. <laughs> it's a weird thing what? to eat certain parts of an animal. The only if you think about it. You're supposed to think about what you eat. No, I don't eat. Mm. Oh, come on now. That's called mindful eating. That's what the kids call it. <clears throat> I call mindful it. Mindful eating. I call it hunger. Hunger. Your uh, balls are hot, my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> How many balls can you fit in your mouth, Greg? Hold on. <laughs> I have a whole green plane after dark. <laughs> <laughs> you know the thing I noticed about you pilots? I heard this like I from breakfast having a buddy of mine the other morning. It's it's a tight knit community, it's like a fraternity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, of guys who are um, um, avid and they love they're, they're passionate about flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, planes is really cool. Well it's not just passion about flight. It's passionate about getting other people involved in mm-hmm. flight too. Because everybody always talks them. about, you know, someday I would love to be a pilot. You're gonna be a pilot. My someday is you just do it. Yeah, go. You do it. Yeah, yeah. And I just couldn't imagine not being able to fly somewhere. Oh, for you. Oh, mm-hmm. French, 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 onion. French onion is really oh, warm. Okay. Mm. Oh, you're perfect. Welcome. Yep, you're welcome. Looks good. Thanks, Maddie. That was amazing. That was beautiful. Uh, I'm the only one eating it now. I don't feel like no, man. I'm getting it too. Um, well, I mean, I mean, like, well, it's interesting that the, I don't know. I'm always fascinated by the, get a the community of aspect of speaking and speakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and pilots the same thing. There's a skilled position. A lot of people have an assumption about mm-hmm. what it is. A lot of people talk about it. I want to fly someday. I want to be speak. I want to be a speaker. Mm-hmm. There's also an aspect of both that are like it's cool to be called one. So that by itself carries a lot of weight in terms of why people try to get into it. But my, what I'm trying to get at, there's a difference between what you think it is mm-hmm. as to when you get into it. A lot mm-hmm. of people have an idea about, hey, I want to do this, and then they actually do it day to day, and they're like, well, this is way too much right. work, screw mm-hmm. this. But that's interesting for you as a speaker because your schedule, again, go back to it. Your schedule, I don't, I just don't think people understand when they see you know, you making a social media post, it's so effortless, it's you. It's yeah. You. How much work goes on, not only to keep that up, but also like your schedule and you're out there getting, you know, talking with uh, people putting on these events. You're obviously doing the events, you're traveling to the events. Mm-hmm. But and yeah. prepping too, because think about, yeah. you have to content. Be, you're a motivator. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, if you're motivating people that aren't motivated or the unmotivated, the thing that impresses me most is you always, we don't get to see the off days, but people understand yeah. just because I'm the motivator doesn't mean I'm, right. I, I woke up motivated. Right. We all are unmotivated at times, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And so it's not just that getting up on stage mm. and motivating us, it's the you stay in motivation that, or, you know, and then, then the behind the scenes work mm-hmm. that impresses me the most, right? I mean, you know, there's a, to answer your question, there's a lot of people who get involved with it. Uh, they try it, like I said, they don't get to do it. Can't do something. This speaking, like anything else, mm-hmm. you know. For instance, perfect example. I don't want Colin. We uh, 
We're getting ready to land. He didn't say, guys, I'm going to try to land this plane. No, he was committed. I will land this plane. <laughs> you know, yeah. the pilot, oh. I, I mean, it's a bad thing to mm-hmm. politics. Yeah, I'm going to try to. This is Niner Niner, Six Niner, whatever. I'm going to try. I'd be like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean try? <laughs> you know, we got to commit it. He says, this is the one way I'm going. I'm going to land. I'm committed to this. That's the way it's got to be with anything, whether it's speaking, you're flying a plane, starting a business, working for someone. you got to be committed to it. Right. And the folks who make it are committed. They land. You know, they're able yeah. to take off as well because they're committed to it. Well, for you, for you, it's attitude, right? That's, oh, yeah. what, that's your, the central kind of premise of what you speak about, really, right? Well, you think about the airplane. Airplane's got an attitude, right, Colin? Oh. Yep, the attitude and altitude. You see what I'm saying? Oh, and yeah. The plane's got the wrong, you got to adjust the attitude to a plane. Mm-hmm. All the time, such it is with human beings. So I talk about the attitude of a champion. Every day you have to adjust your attitude. And like you said, Colin, there are days, folks, I don't feel like it. Yeah. There are days I am not motivated. Yeah. There. And see, that's the thing about motivation. It's it, it's tricky to people. It's actually it's very dis, um, deceptive. Because I'm just not feeling motivated today. Well, no duh. You can't be motivated every day. No one can be. Yeah. But that's why it has to be about purpose. Yeah. Because even when you don't feel like it, motivation, yeah. you've got to have a stronger purpose that is way stronger than your motivation. Yeah. Oh. So there's a lot of days I don't feel like speaking. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like getting on the airplane. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like talking to people during the talk or after talking. The only thing you're thinking they're talking, you just hear, well, want, 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 want yeah. sometimes because your mind's checked out. Right, right, right. You know, you're dealing with your own tragedies. You're going to be stressed at home, uh, physical stress, financial stress, it's just life stress in right. general. So there's days I don't feel like it. But yeah. That's why it's not about motivation. It's about purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you have to, that purpose and that attitude, you have to adjust your uh, attitude every day. And remember what your purpose is. You got to get it back to where it's lucky enough to open up for you, to speak before you, you know, on behalf of the aunt, you know, mm-hmm. what, uh, what, how kind of we all got together. And I always remember watching you at, both to learn, but also just to be a fan. Mm-hmm. And I, always, I, was, I was amazed with the first time I saw you at how you reduced the line between speaking. Uh, at someone, and you're with, speaking with them, them not yeah, at them. Conversation. Yeah. Is that mm-hmm. so? When you're up there, I mean, a lot of people do like, okay, so people want to get into public speaking or stand in front of their their I don't know, family or mm-hmm. in front of the boardroom or just make a better, you know, just present presenter in general. How do you reduce that line? Like, what is it for you to get in there and make it feel so it's just kind of like family? My industry sometimes you have more speakers that have written more books than they've read. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, everybody's an expert at something. And, it's, and, and I'm not saying by no means I'm making a broad statement, but I'm saying some. And the way to bridge that gap from you being the person, the guy or the guy on the stage, to they can relate to you, don't show them how perfect you are. Right. When I speak, I'm not showing picture, picture, pictures of my house, my car, what I, my, what I have, material possessions. No, I showed them my wounds. Right. Yeah, you do. When you show people yeah. your wounds, yes, people right. can relate to your wounds and your pain. Right. You know, they can relate to that. Whether they were self-inflicted, like I've got a bunch of self-inflicted wounds, or just life wounds. People, can, everybody in that audience can't relate to somebody who's achieved this level of success or that level of success, right. whatever it may be. But every single person in this restaurant, in this town, mm-hmm. back speaking this town, man, they're dealing with wounds right now from the floods. Oh, that's right. right. You know, Great everyone point. can relate to wounds. If I was to go over there and start talking about, yeah, how successful I am, or this person is, or whatever, they're thinking, dude, we got bigger problems. If I can say, you know what, you guys are going through some pain right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, some of you have lost your livelihood, literally. Mm-hmm. Some have even lost their lives yeah. in our yeah. state because of the floods. Yeah. You know, man, so that's a that's you, a great you, point. Yeah, yeah, so you got to talk about their pains, man, and say I can relate to you, even if I have. I've been through that pain I understand pain right but then what you do tell them here's how you can get back up we can do this together yeah. mm-hmm. so when you share your pain but also bring them back up that's what hits not only the head mm-hmm. but the heart right. and the soul and so when I go and speak man I bridge that gap by saying you know what if the personal side is not at peace the professional side will look good yeah but eventually that starts to show too Oh, oh my god. Oh goodness. no you didn't. Yeah, you you literally... yeah. Oh, I bet you have some of those. I, I bet I do have one of your favorite. Oh, I bet you do too. I, I bet, bet I do. Yeah. 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 Mm. It's really hard to just stop this sit here. This is your barnstormer burger for ya. Oh. Yep, and I'll be right back with the French dip, okay? Listen, I'm trying to cut down a little bit. Yeah. Until it gets me. Oh, don't you get it. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us, what did you think? Did you have a good time? Unbelievable experience. 
you know, it was an old green plane experience. Oh. The conversation, the food, and just getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah, but also yeah. just seeing great, awesome scenery, meeting great people, and things you just can't see on the ground. Dude, and it's also for us is getting to hang with you again and have seen yeah, a different man. way. It awesome. It's always good. Good what to learn a little bit more about you. Absolutely. Uh, great flight. Great it was food. a great flight. Yeah, yeah it was. Great it's conversation. It was. It was. Stuck the landings, man. Yeah, that's great. Stuck the landings. Appreciate right. it, guys. Thanks for coming back to visit us again. I love to do it, man. Right, appreciate it, bro. Thanks a lot, man. Love you, bro. Love, love you, big dog. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, Absolutely. Really do. Thanks a lot. All right. Now let's, let's go, go golf. <laughs> Oh, it's, is it? 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 Is